Hello, and welcome. Today, we're going to be continuing with the Liam route of Marisol Bay. So, let's get stuck in. I wake up feeling refreshed. Well, what did I do? <laughs> Off to a good start. I wake up feeling refreshed. Work has been doing great. I end up feeling exhausted before I even have my lunch break. But that doesn't mean I'm not enjoying being Captain Bailey. On my best days, I'm an adventurer run running with my mateys through the sand. On my worst days, I'm a grumpy washed up pirate. But even then, I'm having a blast. Today, I'm having one of the latter days. Last night, I spent hours scrolling through social media on my phone while I laid awake in bed. I made the very terrible mistake of taking a nap when I got home, and then when it was time to sleep for the night, well, it didn't happen. I'm running on four hours sleep, and I'm already six hours into the workday. The coffee this morning and at lunch did nothing to help me. I was barely able to say good morning to Liam and Mrs. V as I dragged my feet across the lobby floor. Now, as a child runs around me begging me to say "ar" one more time, I want nothing more than to crawl into the warm sand and sleep. Yes, I love acting. The snotty children I could do without. Especially when they're tugging on my coattails. Captain, Captain, say it again! Arr. <laughs> Arr. I take in a deep breath and shut my eyes tightly. I can't bring myself to comply with the kid's will. On any other day, sure, but today I'm having a hard time even staying awake. Cairo, you can do this. Just a few more hours. As the kid reaches for my arm again, his mother approaches and holds a camera out in front of us. Can I take a picture with you and my son? This is customary, though... I need to remain in character and play around as Captain Bailey before I submit to their request. What be that, fair maiden? I tilt my head like I'm confused. I try my best to be convincing, but I'm also so tired that not even the acting gods can save me right now. A camera dummy! The child turns his attention to his mother and glares at her. Mom, look how dumb pirates are. I told you! Pirate's Cove is lame! The kid continues on a tirade about how much time he wasted being here, how ridiculous my costume is, and how he wishes he never returns to this section of the, pro of the resort despite spending the last hour taunting me about the way my pirate accent sounds. Frankly, I'm a little offended. Not everyone has to enjoy every part of the resort, but there is no need to shout the negative fe feelings to everyone around us. My head is pounding, and I want nothing more than for them to leave me alone. What's so wrong with this place? You don't like this pirate fellow? He's the worst part! The mother asks for no explanation, and instead focuses her intense gaze on me. You're supposed to be making this a fun experience for my child, not bore him to tears. The... M the kid's mother puts the camera away and crosses her arms over her chest. This part of acting, the forced hospitality, may be the thing I hate the most. I have to keep reminding myself that I enjoy working at Marisol Bay. Today is just an obstacle on the journey. Forgive me. Are you getting paid the same thing as the rest of the staff? Surely it's not so hard to put on a costume and talk to people. You weren't even smiling when I walked up to you. The mother continues to abrate my ability to do my job based on her son's word, despite not having even interacted with me prior. I clench my fists, but quickly undo it. Fair maiden. I begin to speak and she snaps at me to shut my mouth. Don't try acting like a pirate now. The damage is done. Can't believe I pay so much for my black card and all you can do is stand there looking like a bumbling idiot. My child deserves better. 
I really hate this woman. <laughs> At this point, the woman becomes belligerent and is shouting about how I should get fired. I don't know how I got caught up into this mess as I haven't done anything different than usual. Yes, I'm a bit tired, but I don't think I'm doing that bad of a job today. Ma'am. There's some shuffling in the sand behind me. Wyatt walks up to us and stands between mo the mother and I. For the first time, I see a scowl on his face. It's an emotion I didn't think Wyatt was capable of. Uh. I was just standing over there. He points off in the direction of the lookout. He must have been leaving to come and enjoy some time sunbathing on the beach. And I couldn't help but overhear you shouting. I've been at Pirate Cove almost every day since it's opened, and I have never had a negative experience with Captain Bailey. In fact, he's the main reason I keep coming back. Hearing Wyatt say those words almost makes up for this woman's terrible behaviour. I'm glad that he at least feels that way about my performance. The mother, on the other hand, isn't impressed with Wyatt's speech. She rolls her eyes and fumbles in her bag. After a moment, she presents a black card and hands it to Wyatt, as if he runs the resort. <laughs> I'm a premium member of Marisol Bay. I pay a lot of money for this membership, and I expect only the best. This sorry excuse for a pirate isn't cutting it. If my child thinks this place is boring, this man isn't trying hard enough. With all due respect, ma'am, he is a person. Wyatt points to me. I'm not going to sit here and listen to you berate him because your son isn't happy with his performance. Absolutely not. I don't care how much money you're paying. All of us guests are equal. We most certainly are not. My premium membership means more to this resort than your regular stay. She waves her hands towards him as if she is dismissing him from her sight. I don't think the owner will appreciate you harassing one of his most loyal clients this way. This woman, is she serious? Wyatt scoffs. He's unwavering in his beliefs. Go ahead and tell the owner. My name is Wyatt. Don't forget to tell him the part about you harassing one of his workers. Hmm... I wonder, for this route, for the Wyatt route we let Wyatt handle it, but I wonder if for the Liam route we should still let Wyatt handle it or if we should contact Amelia. I guess we can let Wyatt handle it again. <laughs> I decide not to interject. Wyatt seems to be doing a good job already. Have fun with your shamble of summer, you shrewd. The woman already has her phone out, and she's typing a message frantically with both thumbs. Oh, I really hope she doesn't get Wyatt into trouble. I don't want him to be suspended from Marisol Bay for sticking up for me, no less. My days wouldn't be the same without his goofy grin. When Wyatt stands there quietly letting the woman get her anger out, she realises he isn't going to give her the reaction she wants. The woman just storms off with her child. Wyatt lets out a, lar a large sigh. Sorry. Sorry you had to deal with that. What? What? No, that's okay. People are like that sometimes. No, it's, it's not okay because you're working hard and she's taking advantage of you. This is the first time I'm seeing this side of Wyatt. He's passionate, throwing his arms in the air as he talks. I still, lo I still love the pineapple shirt. I think that's my favorite of all the of all the shirts that he's we that he wears in this game. I have to admit that it. It does feel good to have someone sticking up for me. Thank you. Hmm. 
Myatt smiles at me, all tension melting away. He runs his hands through his hair for a moment before winking at me. He broke character, Captain. Uh, my eyes widen and I place a hand over my mouth. He's right. Naru, <laughs> matey. I can't do it. My voice falters as I dip my head low. I'm too tired. It's okay. We can't always be someone we're not. It gets tiring to keep up. So, I won't tell your secret. I didn't hear Cairo on the beach. But that's on one condition. In a situation like this, would Amelia really care that I broke character? Still, I don't want to be known as the guy who couldn't keep, the, keep up with the act. There's always a condition. Let me guess, dinner at Mer de la Pearl? It's a good suggestion, but the staff there just won't let me in and swing trunk. Swim trunks. Lame, right? My head's green is full-blown, and I can't help but return it. His energy is contagious. Let me take you out. I heard from a little birdie that the gift shop has a brand new Hawaiian shirt design. You can come with me during your lunch break tomorrow. Ah, he figures he'd get his shirts from the gift shop. I didn't expect it, but it makes sense. What's your obsession with Hawaiian shirts? They're comfortable. They have a pocket right here in the front to hold my wallet, and they're stylish. Duh. I wouldn't say that these shirts are inherently stylish, but Wyatt seems to wear them well. Especially with the first few buttons undone. Captain. Come on. Do me the honor, Captain. He tips a fake hat and bows in front of me. <laughs> I can say yes to that. On one condition. I mirror his words, but can't quite replicate that wink of his. Name it. You have to pick me up. Well, don't let the luscious looks and great sense of fashion fool you. I am nothing but a gentleman. Alright, I will see you tomorrow then. Tomorrow, but for now, my stomach. He looks longingly at the lookout. Wyatt salutes me with two fingers and jogs off in search of good food. I feel butterflies in my stomach and I don't know why. For the rest of my shift, I can't stop thinking about my lunch date with Wyatt. Hmm. I can't help thinking you've chosen wrong. <laughs> It's hard to tell with this game what the choices they're actually doing. I fought every urge to take a nap when I got home and from work last, last night and instead passed out at a reasonable time. Well, I'm well rested and totally... I'm, I'm, I'm red... Oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm well rested and awake. Totally not because I literally can't stop thinking about my lunch date with Wyatt later. I want to learn more about him. I feel like we're finally getting close to each other. I think the two of us can be really good friends. When lunch finally arrives, I'm ecstatic. I quickly change out of my costume and wait on the beach of Pirate's Cove. I wait until my lunch break is almost up and Wyatt still isn't here. In fact, he hasn't even popped up in... He hasn't even popped in today like he usually does. It occurs to me that I don't have a way to contact him, and so I go to the lookout. I can't wait any longer. I need to eat so I can survive the rest of the day. When I get there, the person who greets me is a young man whose name tag reads Aiden. I ex I'm ex expecting to see Brooke, but she's nowhere in sight. Uh, is Brooke in today? I was hoping to get her opinion on the situation, because she must know Wyatt well. He's here all the time. She's on a lunch break. She'll be back in 15 minutes. Can I help you with something else? Yeah. Yeah, can I get some chicken tenders? I make sure to tell Aiden I only have 10 minutes left on my lunch break, and he seats me at a table. My chicken tenders come out of the kitchen almost immediately, and I'm, able to, and I'm able to scarf them down quickly. When I finally get up to leave, 
I spot, Bro I spot Brooke at the entrance to the lookout. Her arms are linked with Wyatt's, and the two of them seem to be giggling about something. My chest tightens. Getting stood up sucks, but getting stood up so the person can go hang out with someone else stings even more. I don't want either of them to see me, and I try to duck out of sight as I shuffle towards the stairs, but it's no use. As I pass her by, Brooke grabs hold of my arm and stops me. Wow, hell? Um, that music's very loud to me. I don't know how it's. <laughs> I don't know how it's being recorded though. I didn't know you were coming to look out today for lunch. I would have stayed. She clasps her hands together, unlinking her arms with Wyatt, who looks like a deer in headlights. Or I would have invited you out to eat with Wyatt and I at the hub. I'm embarrassed and I don't know what to say. So I just offer the pair a half-hearted smile. Oh, I wasn't planning on coming up here today. It just happened. Cairo? The gift shop. He says it with a frown, though Wyatt can't even lock eyes with me as he says it. What about the gift shop? I'd love to stay in chat, but I have to get back to work, so... I don't let either of them get a word in as I shoved past them and bolt down the stairs. I want to cry, but I, remember, I remind myself while I'm at work. Wyatt left me waiting without even telling me he hadn't planned to meet me at all. Worse yet, it didn't even look like he had something more important to tend to. As Brooke made it seem like they were simply hanging out. The rest of the day is painfully slow. I half expect to see Wyatt come and apologize to me, but he doesn't. I don't see the man for the rest of the day, and the pit in my stomach never goes away. A few days have passed since the incident at Pirate's Cove, and I haven't seen or heard from Wyatt. This seems to be a trend with him, showing up for a bit and then disappearing. I've decided not to worry too much about it and focus on my job. Today I'm waiting for Liat and a uh, Murder La Pearl for lunch with him and Mrs. V. Liam has extended the, the invitation to me on this day in particular because of an event being run that he'd like to have me involved in. I don't know what I can offer a fancy place like that, but I'm willing to hear him out. When I approach Murder La Pearl, Camilla has her nose scrunched up like the last time. She's not excited to have me here. Though, considering Liam said she, she needed my help, I'm a bit confused. It's you again. Same shabby clothes, not even any effort at all. This is my lunch break. Didn't exactly bring a tux. Polo shirt is all we require. I let out a sigh of annoyance. Is she being serious right now? Do you need my help or not? I don't have the time or patience for her today, as the heat beats down on my skin... I'm sure she's a lovely person, but I don't quite get the vibe that she likes me much, if at all. Hold your tongue, boy. I don't need help from someone who parades himself around the resort as a mascot. Liam requested you, not me. I am not a mascot. I finally come to, to terms with my job being more than that. Camilla drags it back up again. I roll my eyes at the bitter woman and cross my arms over my chest. Are you going to let me in to speak to Liam, or do you need us to have this meeting at the beach? Camilla begins to flip through a notepad that sits on a podium nearby. She stops at a blank page and begins scribbling something down. I'm not quite sure what to make of it. When she's done, she looks up and motions to the entryway. Go. Get out of my face. It was nice talking to you as well. Thanks, Camilla. I give her an exaggerated wave and walk past her as she scoffs. Once I'm in the restaurant, it's not too hard to find Liam. It's almost like the last time we had met except now, Mrs. V isn't here. Instead, Liam sits alone at a table far too large with the two of us. I wonder why he's calling for me today. 
Clearly, Camilla isn't interested in my help, so... My mind wanders as I notice Liam reading through the menu in front of him. His fingers slide down the cursive black, black print. As I drag my feet towards him, Liam doesn't look up once. Is he so cap enraptured with the menu that he seriously doesn't hear me? That gives me an idea. A terrible idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. I tiptoe towards Liam and then lean in towards his ear. I grab hold of his shoulder and whisper. The man lets out a shriek and spills his glass of water onto the table. His shirt and the menu he was reading so intently. What the hell? <laughs> I can't help but chuckle at his downturned eyes. Despite his angry eyes, I notice a smile quickly forming on his face. He runs his fingers through his hair and I can only laugh. Glad you think that's funny. Sorry, I didn't think you'd get all wet. Here, let me help you. I walk over from the other side of the table and grab one of the napkins. I hold it out to Liam, who only shakes his head. Nope, you're cleaning it up, smart guy. I wipe the liquid off the table while Liam pats himself down. Then, the two of us sit down. I'm surprised he didn't get mad at me for scaring him. I usually take everything Liam says seriously because, for the little time I've known the guy, he's been very forthcoming with me. Although, I really want to see if there's another side to this man. He can't be so serious all the time, can he? There must be something more to him. I watch as Liam reorganizes his papers. I'm hoping that the next time we meet is to do something more fun, where we can both relax and get to know each other. Liam is one of my only friends here, but I'm afraid that if I step away from Marisol Bay, there won't be anything left for the two of us. Just like school, you spend every day with your class and then when graduation comes, everyone goes to their new school and forgets about you. You find out that without that institution in front of you, you really have nothing in common. Cairo, I invited you here because... His voice trails off and he frowns. Cairo? What's wrong? Nothing? I shake my head, hoping my long hair covers my face. I don't like him scrutinizing me like this. No, there's nothing up, but... No, there's something up. You can't just be on a, all energetic and scare me only to have that blank look in, you, in your eyes minutes later. What happened? I was just thinking... Could we be friends outside of work, or is this it? Liam is stunned to silence, and I don't blame him. I shouldn't have said anything like that out loud. I've only made it weird for the both of us. Never mind. <laughs> Forget I said anything. I look away. My eyes dart from the way it stuck. What? My eyes dart from the white stuff to the elegant decorations around anything to avoid Lingen's gaze. No, wait. You caught me off guard. It doesn't mean I don't want to talk about it. Friendships are much more than situational occurrences. If we cannot connect outside of work, we are not friends. Acquaintances, yes, but not friends. Liam was right. If work ends and our relationship is suddenly gone, it means that we haven't put in the effort to keep up a potential friendship afloat. But that's what I'm scared of. What if we just drift away from each other because we can't maintain a friendship? What brought all of this on, Cairo? I want to be your friend. Outside of Marisol Bay. I want to hang out, laugh, and joke together. We can certainly do that. How about you come to my place? How about you come to dinner at my place this weekend after our shift? We won't talk about anything work-related at all. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds fun. Good. Now. He slides his papers in front of me. I promised no work talk this weekend, but since you're here, I have a proposition for you. An upgrade, if you will. 
I take a glance down at the papers Liam has maneuvered in front of me. They're flyers for an event being held at Murder La Pearl. What's all this? There's an event being held here in a, a few weeks, and I'm working with Carmela to run it. We'll be celebrating most of our esteemed... We'll be celebrating our most esteemed guest. Those with the black card. Ah, the black card. I'm not sure what it is, but I do recall that mother angrily tossing it in Wyatt's face a few days ago. Does owning the black card make you like a season pass holder or something? This is not an amusement park, Cairo. It's a resort. Is there much of a difference? The black card allows unlimited entry to all activities, food, and gift services. Only the wealthiest of guests have it. This sounds exactly like it's an amusement park. So, we're celebrating the fact that they're giving the resort an absurd amount of money? I mean, the lady who I ran into last week with Wyatt just threw it in our faces. <sighs> our high-paying guests do act a little... entitled. But that comes with any luxury experience. You need to suck it up and put on a smile. That's a terrible attitude. Staff should not have to deal with people's nonsense like that. I don't care how much the person pays. If they can't treat someone like a human, then they do not deserve the experience. Do you know how many times I've had to comp a room or a meal because an angry person comes shouting at me about how the staff is rude and... They didn't pay big money to have to wait for things. Most of these claims are illegitimate. Our staff is usually in the right, but our staff aren't the one keeping the resort afloat. It's a toss-up. I know in my heart that Liam is right in terms of keeping a business flourishing, pleasing your rich guests and continuing to give you money, but that also doesn't mean you should let your staff suffer for it. Because they're the ones working hard every day to keep the business afloat. Without them, who is going to entertain, serve, and tend to the guests' needs? Mm, I suppose so. What will you have me doing at this event? I point down at my less than satisfactory outfit and frown. I'm not exactly known at the resort for my luxur luxurious accomplishment. I'm a mascot. No. I was wrong for calling you that when we met. You're not a mascot, you're an entertainer. Hearing Liam admit that makes my heart swell with joy. Having someone appreciate my talent and craft is all I've ever really pushed for in my life. I don't really think Liam quite understands how much that means to me, but I am grateful for his words. Well then, how can I entertain you? William begins to, to chuckle. There's a twinkle in his eye. You can entertain the guests by being the MC. It's a business venture of sorts. Mast is a big thank you for our exclusive guests. You'll simply be ent entertaining the guests and urging them to donate more money to help Marisol Bay grow. I play a pirate on the beach. You really think I can do something like get people to open their wallets? That's a long shot. It's all acting, Cairo. You don't need to believe in what you're selling. It helps, but it's not necessary. You simply need to play a part. I believe you can do it. So, if you're willing to help, I'll clear it with Amelia. As Leo and I talk, the time begins to slip away. I spent too much time here and I need to head back to my station. Think about it and let me know, alright? No hard feelings if you don't want to, but you'd be doing me a huge favour. If this event isn't a success, it'll prove to the owner that I'm a capable worker. Perhaps my future is here and not as a lawyer in some stuffy firm. I'll think about it for sure. Liam is trusting me with his future and that's not something I'm going to take lightly at all. I need to make sure that this is something I really want to do before accepting it. As I head back to the Riptide to change, I feel an emptiness settling in my gut. On one hand, 
I'm glad that things are going well with Liam and I, but my relationship with Wyatt seems to be faltering. You don't have one in this route. <laughs> Every time, it seems like we're making progress. Wyatt and I take a step back. Unlike with Liam, there are doubts in my mind that once this summer is over, I'll never hear from Wyatt again. As eccentric as Wyatt is, I enjoy spending time with him. Having his, having his smiling face at Pirate's Cove is one of the highlights of my day. Not to mention that the other day he stood up for me when a patron was berating me. The voice of doubt raises its ugly head and reminds me of the why it does actually care. He's doing a terrible show, job of showing it. Why does he keep pushing me away? I let these thoughts run through my head as the rest of the day passes by slowly. In the locker room, as I'm changing to head out of the resort for the evening, Brooke enters. She tosses her bag onto one of the benches with a sigh and collapses to the floor dramatically. I gather my stuff from the locker, shut the door, and secure the lock. Rough day? She shakes, she shakes, she shakes her head, but blows some of her hair out of her face. I had some exciting and terrifying news and it's totally stressing out. Breathe before you tell me. She inhales and then exhales, standing up and straightening out her outfit. Amelia is trusting me to run an event of my choosing at the lookout in a few weeks. It's a chance for me to show her and the big boss man that our little family friendly side of the resort has a lot of potential. It's a big deal. No kidding. This is something you've wanted, right? Yes. The only thing is that Amelia has given me full reign over it because I'm in charge of the lookout this summer. And I don't know what to do. All I'm positive about is that I want you on my team. I mean, if you'll lend me your talents? Yeah. Yeah, of course. If I'm able, I, s to I certainly will. You know, Liam asked me to help out with an event as well. Her eyes mm, widen for a moment and she lets out a huge gasp. Please don't tell me that it's going to happen in a few weeks as well. To my understanding, it is, but perhaps they're on different days? I doubt it. Remember how I told you there's like this unofficial battle between the recreational side of the island and the luxury side? See? It's a real thing! We're actually battling it out! Are you really? Yeah, think about it, Cairo. Maybe the big boss man is trying to see which side will run their event better. If that's the case, you're going to need to pick your allegiance. I waved off her heated concern with my right hand. This is all speculation. Unless there's proof that the owner is actually going to, to pick one side to expand over the other based on a silly event, I'm not believing it. Hey, I'm sure that's not the case at all. Let's get going before we hit traffic on the way out. Brooke is reluctant, but she nods and follows me to sign out. In the small chance that she's correct and both events are held on the same day, I have to choose who I'm going to help run. I can't be in both places at the same time. Whose future do I want to help succeed? Brooke's or Liam's? The next day and the day after that go by almost uneventfully. Today, Amelia has called for all staff members together in the cafeteria before the workday starts. Technically, today is my day off, but Amelia insisted we all show up for this very important meeting regardless. As I waltz in, Amelia and I make eye contact. She smiles, though I can see her pen tapping impatiently against his, her signature wooden cookbook. Cairo. Welcome, Cairo. Thank you so much for coming in on your day off. Find a seat and we'll begin shortly. I scan the room and see a few spots available. One seat is in the middle by Brooke who is waving at me to come join her. The other is all the way in the front with Mrs. V, Liam and Carmilla. Finally, there's a seat in the back next to some staff members I've never met before. Who should I sit by? Brooke. 
me and Mrs. V by myself. We're gonna sit with Liam and Mrs. V. It's a no-brainer. I, I head to the front of the seating area where Liam, Mrs. V, and Carmella are chatting. I clear my throat as I pass the three, parking next to Liam. Next to him is Mrs. V, and thankfully, Carmella is the farthest away from me. Good morning. She begins to laugh lightly and looks over at Liam. <laughs> Aww. Liam, you were right. Karu did indeed join us. Mrs. V shifts her attention over to us. Liam saved you a seat and insisted that you join us. No. Did he now? I can't help the big goofy grin I'm wearing. Liam only shrugs in response. <laughs> Look at his flush! <laughs> uh, saved you a seat because I knew you'd want to sit with us, that's it. Because we're friends, admit it. As I settle in, Mrs. V leans over to... leans over Liam and begins to talk to me. Did you manage to eat something this morning? I, uh, didn't wake up with enough time to, but... I'll get something to eat on the on the way out after the meeting. You're not working. No. <laughs> Wrong character. You're not working today? No. Nope. I'm not on the schedule. I have to come in for the meeting, but then I'm going to go straight home and get some more sleep. Camilla rolls her eyes from across the table. What's the point? You're already awake. You might as well do something productive. Sleep is productive. You could spend your time helping me plan the event at Medela Pearl. I assume that's what Amelia is going to talk about anyway. Oh, is Cairo going to help us? That's marvelous. I want him to MC the event. I think with his charm, people will want to spend their money. Oh. Charm? Hardly. This man can't even dress appropriately. I want to fire back at her, but I can't because Amelia begins to speak. Thank goodness, too, because I haven't officially decided if I'm going to MC the event with Liam or not. Welcome. Thank you all for joining me today. As some of you may have heard already that there will be two events held at the resort in a few weeks, as the end of summer nears. One will be at Murder de la Pearl, and the other will be at the Lookout. Both events will be run simultaneously to accommodate all kinds of guests. If people do not feel like dressing up and heading to a fancy dining experience, they can have some fun at the lookout. As most of you are returning staff, you know how much we prioritise the end of summer activities for guests and staff alike. These two events at our restaurants will be kicked off at the end of our time together. Is my summer here at Marisol Bay really almost over? It's a sad thought, but I've been enjoying myself. After the two events, there will be an end of summer gathering, and then we will officially say goodbye to the seasonal staff members. That's still a month away, but you should all but so you were all prepared, this is how the rest of the summer will go. The events at Madela Pearl and the Lookout will be hosted by Liam and Brooke respectively. If they need help, and you want to assist, I encourage you to do. I encourage you to do so. Try to engage the guests as much as possible. A knot grows in my stomach. I want to help both Brooke and Liam, but it seems that I'll have to make a choice between the two of them after all. Amelia drones on and on about other things like people taking too long on their lunch breaks, permanent all-year-round positions, and lateness. When she's done speaking, I stand up to leave, then something, or rather, someone, crosses my mind. What? I should ask Brooke about where he's been. She's always talking to him at the lookout, and the last time I saw them together, they looked like they were having a good time. I rush to get Brooke before she heads off to start her shift for the day. Brooke! She turns to me with a frown. 
You didn't sit with me. Sorry. I know I'm sorry. She shrugs and smiles. Thankfully, she isn't actually upset with me. What's up? It's about Lyot. I haven't seen him around a little bit. Brooke smirks and leans to towards me with a devious look in her eyes. Huh? Are you worried about him? Do you miss him? Uh, something along those two lines. Yeah, I'm worried he doesn't want to see me anymore since he hasn't been at Pirates Cove recently. This is about him hanging out with me instead of at the gift shop with you, isn't it? Why he didn't tell me he had plans with you and he doesn't often forget about them, so I'm not sure what his deal is. Though, he's facing a lot of stress from his family right now, so maybe that's affecting him. I don't know for certain. You'll just have to ask him. That's a problem. I don't know how to get in touch with him if he doesn't show up at Pirate's Cove. Don't worry. <laughs> that's not a problem at all. I'm going to text you his number. Call him and sort it all out. I'm sure he's not avoiding you on purpose. Sorry, can't stay in chat any longer. Have to head to the lookout to prep for the first guests of the day. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, Brooke. She throws up a peace sign and heads out. With nothing else, with nothing else left here to do, I follow and make my way to the hub. I take a seat on one of the benches. There's people mulling about the resort despite how early it is. I will admit, looking at the resort doesn't give me the time or energy to appreciate Marisol Bay fully. I wonder what it'd be like to stay here with my parents and my sister. I believe Wyatt is staying at the resort all by himself. I never see him visiting the beach with a partner, a friend, or a family member. Instead, he's made friends with the staff. Is he all alone by choice? Or is it because of something else? I hold my phone in my hands and look down at the screen. Brooke has sent me Wyatt's number and I've added it to my contact list. I'm worried about him. I want to call him and let him know that I've missed seeing him. I wrestle with my thoughts and try to convince myself that it's way too early in the morning to call him. Unfortunately, I've seen him at Pirate's Cove bright and early, so I know it's highly likely that he's awake. I have no more excuses. The phone dials for a few minutes and then I hear White's voice on the other end. Hello? Hi. Um, uh, Wyatt, it's me, Cairo. I hope you don't mind, but Brooke gave me your number. Mm. The captain is calling. To what do I owe the pleasure? I can just picture that signature smile of his right now. I haven't seen you at Pirate's Cove in a while. I wanted to see if you were alive. I am indeed alive. Thanks for checking up on me. Is that all? I mean, I guess. I didn't plan this far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I hear Wyatt's laugh and my nerves melt away. If you're calling me, it must mean you're not at work. Are you free? I'd like to explain to you why I've been a little bit distant. Are you going to stand me up again? I didn't mean to. I was really looking forward to spending more time with you as Kyra and not Captain Bailey. I hesitate for a moment, but Wyatt needs to know how he made me feel. It hurt. Sorry. <laughs> that doesn't sound genuine at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> the tone of his voice is somber, but I don't quite know if I believe him yet. I'd like to talk about this in person, if possible. Can we meet up? I'm at Marisol Bay right now. I had a meeting this morning, and I have no plans for the rest of the day. Oh, great. We can go to the dine-in aquarium. It'll be fun. I did want to visit Coattail... Co Coattail... Cocktail Ocean at least once before the summer ends. So, even if White doesn't show up, I'll have something to do. Let's do it. Great. I'll see you in about half an hour then. See you then. We say our goodbyes and hang up. I feel more nervous than before I made the call. I'm seeing Wyatt again and I can't imagine what he's going to say. It doesn't take long for Wyatt to get here. 
In fact, he's at our meeting spot before I even make my trek there. So much for half an hour. It looks like he's already been at the resort. When Wyatt looks up, the two of us lock eyes and my heart beats up. My heart beats up? My heartbeat speeds up. Captain. Captain Kai. He waves his arms wildly, laughing like a school child during recess. I can't help but smile back at him. His energy is contagious. I jog up to him. Hey, nice shirt. Is that the new one from the gift shop? Ouch. I guess I deserved that one. I know I apologize on the phone already, but I am sorry. I was hoping to wow you with lunch before we got into this conversation. He places a hand behind his neck. I had a whole speech planned and everything about this place. You know why I invited you here specifically, right? This is where we first met. Yeah, he's right. This is where Wyatt first bumped into me. Before he even started working at Marisol Bay officially. He's got that same wild hair and calming look in his eyes. Except this time when I look at him, I don't see a minor inconvenience in my day. I see a funny, smooth-talking guy who I want to at least be able to call my friend. I don't know too much about Wyatt, but I do know that I'm happy when he's around. He lightens up my day at Pirate's Cove with that silly smile of his and those terrible dad jokes. I know we would have still met even if I didn't bump into e each other that day, but then I've missed out on all those times getting to make you flustered by trying to make it up to you. No. I thought we were past that. I don't want any fancy dinners. The two of us are smiling at each other. Just this once, let me treat you to a good lunch. Then, we'll be all squared up for me bumping into you. Seriously? Yes. Yes, seriously. What I have to tell you should be said over a nice meal. So you'll be dis distracted by the delicious food. Oh god. What does he need to tell me? I feel my hands growing sweaty. Oh no. <laughs> King, I get lonely eating all by myself every day, so just indulge me for one afternoon. I exhale sharply. He made it sound like he was coming clean about some huge secret or something. Whew, I'm relieved. Alright. He offers me his arm and I link mine with it. Though the walk to Cocktail Ocean is short, Wyatt fills the silence with a list of his favourite foods to eat at the restaurant. I'm happy to finally get a chance to go there. I just hope that Wyatt doesn't disappear on me. And I... I'm going to leave this episode here. We will pick up next time with more Liam Rat. I hope you're enjoying Liam, excited for what's to come. And I will see you next time. Bye bye! <laughs>